The Czech Television Division of Sports is presenting a serial of The Glorious Victors, Gustav Fristensky. Every era has its own standards for defining the beauty of the human body. At the beginning of the 20th century, these criteria were perfectly fulfilled by Gustav Fristensky. His name became a symbol of strength. His well-developed physique was often used by sculptures as a model. Greco-Roman wrestling requires not only strength, great skill and endurance, but also the ability to make a split-second decision. No Czech wrestler was more famous than Gustav Fristensky, who remarkably stayed active for half a century. What do athletes know about him today? His career and his life was part of our college curriculum in the physical education department. I know that he was our best wrestler of all time and our first European champion. But I do not remember more details. Gustav Fristensky was for me a great figure in wrestling and an example as an athlete. I presume not only for me, but for all Czechs. He represented courage, ability, and moral competence that need to be recognized and remembered not only by all athletes, but by all people. Gustav was born on May 18, 1879, in the small village of Kamayek, the firstborn son to Katerina and Alois Fristensky. He was followed by brothers Karol, Josef, and Frantisek. Following Gustav's secondary education, his father decided that he should enter an apprenticeship as a blacksmith. In Kolin, he began his schooling, but it was over very soon. An order apprentice pulled a trick on Gustav, passing him a very hot horseshoe that burned Gustav's hand to the bone. This event concluded his schooling as a blacksmith. Later, in the nearby village of Korum, he learned the trade of butcher, the house and the store where he worked still standing. Here, Gustav witnessed his first wrestling match. A black American wrestler named Delaware was challenging local strong boys to a bout. This competition left a deep impression on Gustav. He decided to become equally strong. He carved barbells out of granite and began to train every day at home. Two years later, he moved to Berno, the Moravian capital city, to gain more experience as a butcher. There, he worked for the German master butcher Sofer. During his time in Berno, Fristensky created a little world for himself. Near the butcher shop where he worked was located the athletic club Hellas. His friends recommended this club for him because of his enormous strength. Before joining Hellas, he was training regularly in the local Sokol facility, but their training program didn't suit his athletic desire. He was looking for a training facility where weightlifting and wrestling would be a priority. In the beginning, Fristensky was accepted among the Hellas members with hesitation. One day, after finishing their regular training session, the strongest members began their favored activity of weightlifting. They wanted to show Fristensky how much stronger they were, so they started working out on the barbells to demonstrate their strength. Verstensky just watched for a while, and when they reached their limit, Verstensky began. In order for Verstensky to demonstrate his full strength, they had to pull out barbells covered in dust, deep in a corner of the gym that nobody attempted to lift ever before. Thanks to already experienced club members, Verstensky learned the first steps of wrestling as well. The century of steam concluded in the year 1900. For the aspiring young strongman Gustav Fristensky, the year was a very successful one. He was victorious in a Greco-Roman wrestling tournament in Prague. Also, aided by the absence of Czech discus champion Suk, Fristensky won in the discus. He also took first in the weightlifting competition. In Berno's Hellas Club, he was already a star. He was decorated with dozens of medals as a wrestler and weightlifter. In 1901, he became a champion of Morovia. 
The following year in Prague, he was celebrated as the Czech champion in wrestling. Here he met the Russian professional wrestling champion George Lurik, who soon would greatly influence Rostensky's career. That year in Brno, Gustav won the Austrian championship. That gave him an opportunity to participate in the European Wrestling Championship in Rotterdam, Holland. Before the grueling competition, he encountered trouble finding a suitable accommodation. He was concerned about communication and whether he would have enough money. Nevertheless, as the competition proceeded, he advanced in the field of 116 athletes to the final round. Three undefeated wrestlers remain, Gustav and the former European champions Egeberg from Denmark and Kruk from Germany. In the end, unknown Gustav Rostensky took home the gold medal. Upon his return to Brno, he received a hero's welcome. The next day, however, he was fired from his job as a butcher. He was unable to find other work in Brno, so he decided to wrestle for money under a pseudonym in Germany. But his true identity was discovered, and he was disqualified as an amateur. In 1908, he received an invitation from Lurik to tour East and North Europe. Brstensky competed in Kiev, Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Helsinki. He was not beaten in any of his matches and gained invaluable experience. In 1909, the 30-year-old Frostensky married Miroslava Eladorova, a daughter of a wealthy brewmaster of a local Litovel brewery. At first, the couple resided in the brewery's office building. In the meantime, Frostensky became one of the brewery's most important stockholders. Two years after the wedding, Gustav and Miroslava left for their honeymoon, allegedly for the Canary Islands. Only when they were already sailing away did Gustav inform Miroslava that the steamer was heading across the ocean to South America. Gustav was very successful in wrestling tournaments in Buenos Aires, Rio de Janeiro, Montevideo, and many other cities. While there, he was contacted by wrestling agents from North America. To remember his successful tour, he received this precious trophy. In 1913, on the world's most modern ocean liner, Imperator, among the travelers were Gustav Frostensky with his wife and younger brother, Frantisek. They were out for another tour, this time to the United States of America. Soon they found themselves at the gate of the New World. Gustav Frostensky filled wrestling venues in Chicago, Cleveland, New York, and many other cities in America. He was victorious over previously undefeated athletes Americus and Sanders. Gustav was victorious in 59 matches. He defeated Lyric in 45 minutes in front of 5,000 spectators in Madison Square Garden. At the beginning of World War I, Gustav was called to duty. However, with the help of his brother-in-law, Elider, a physician, Gustav was declared unfit to serve in the army. Apparently, his legs were very weak. In 1919, Paris hosted a major sporting event called the Pershing Olympics of the Allied Armed Forces. Gustav and Frantisek Fristensky represented Czechoslovakia in the wrestling tournament. This time, their showing was unsuccessful. I must train more, proclaimed the 40-year-old Gustav to himself. Hard and systematic work were for Frostensky never empty words. He maintained a very balanced diet, he didn't overeat, didn't drink, and didn't smoke. He maintained his body weight around 200 pounds. In between the two wars, Prague's sports public could often see him competing in always sold out Lucarina Theater. In 1920 and 1922, he won the Czechoslovakian Championship. In 1929, at age 50, Krstensky won the Professional Championship of Europe. In 1931, Gustav Frostensky placed second in a strong field in the championship of the Slavic nations. In the same year, already 52 years of age, he won an equally strong competition, the prestigious Wrestling Cup of Munich. Gustav Frostensky's exceptional popularity as a true people's hero caught the attention of movie makers. Gustav starred in a silent movie called Prague Executioner, 
which was not very successful. Also, he starred in another movie called The God's Mill. One of Fristensky's most popular challengers was Czech wrestler Joseph Schmeichel. They met on the podium three times, and Fristensky could never defeat him. Schmeichel was also an excellent wrestler, well known in Europe and in America. He concluded his active career early. At this time, wrestling matches were not limited by weight of the competitors, nor by the length of the bouts. Schmeichel was 90 pounds heavier than Fristensky, and they wrestled until the final decision. I met Fristensky in Lidobel, where I was transferred to attend the local high school at the beginning of World War II. I went to his house and received a truly friendly welcome. I mentioned to him that during his matches, I really liked his favorite grip called Mill. He didn't hesitate a second to demonstrate this grip on me personally. Within a brief moment, I found myself flying towards the ceiling. Gustav Fristensky was very fond of farming. In the village of Luzis, not far from Littlevel, he bought a farm. Together with his brother Frantisek, they worked that farm. At that time, the village population was mostly German. The brothers financed the construction of a Czech school there. The farm was lost during the Nazi occupation in World War II to the Germans, and later in 1948 again, when the farm fell to the collectivization process under the communists. One year before the end of the Nazi occupation, Frinsteski was arrested and imprisoned. At the conclusion of the war, he was left nearly broke. He was selling his trophies, and at his advanced age, he was still trying to compete to earn a living. Serkis Saran came to Benisov with a group of wrestlers, one of whom was Mr. Fristensky. They competed in wrestling that can be described as entertainment. One wrestler was the good guy and hero, and the other was the bad guy. Fristensky was always the good guy because he really knew how to wrestle well, and he was very likable as well. The villa that was built here more than 85 years ago still stands in Littlevel on a street that is named Gustav Fristensky Street. The family of Fristensky is now spread well over the world, which is documented in this chronicle. The years passed and Gustav Fristensky didn't have any financial resources to support himself. He decided to sell me his house, and I replied, Uncle Gustav, that is very nice of you, but I do not have that kind of money that I can pay you. And he said, in my life, I already lost so much. I would be very happy if you can pay me every month, and this would grant me some financial security. And with this sale, I became the owner of his house and a citizen of Littlevel. After the war, Gustav Fristensky was almost forgotten. Following the 1948 communist coup, he was forbidden to perform any exhibition matches and any public appearances. He was finally recognized again by the regime when in 1956 he was awarded the prestigious honor as a champion of sports. However, one year later, at the age of 78, he quietly passed away. I believe that Gustav Fristensky will remain as a symbol, not only as a famous wrestler, but also as a person of extraordinary character for all of us.